I feel incredibly emotional about crisps and sandwiches. It's really an effective way to add texture without messing with the kind of flavour profiles of what you might flavour profiles. That sounds so gash, but anyway, that's what it fucking is. <laughs> My name's Max and I run Max's Sandwich Shop. It is a late night hot sandwich shop that you can get pissed in. <laughs> it works for me, I can't say. <laughs> I felt that the sandwich in Britain needed a bit of help. So I tried to put as much kind of culinary effort into making a sandwich as most people would put into a restaurant main course. The ham and chips was the first sandwich that I came up with. Braised ham hock pick a lily that we ferment ourselves, shoestring fries, a fried egg, and malt vinegar mayo. And that there, within all of those things, layered up in the right order, was a classic pub lunch figured out how to put in a sandwich. The first thing I had to look at was the bread. So, I have weighed out flour, salt, and yeast. I'm gonna whack this into the mega blender. Obviously, I spent a lot of time eating fucking sourdough, feeling like I was doing the right thing that food businesses are meant to do um, using this posh bread. And I decided that actually sourdough can go fuck itself. It's too chewy, it's too, so for me, a sandwich should give in when you go for it. Where a sandwich made from sourdough, you take a bite and you have to like rip at the crust and then the bread opens up, all the contents fall out, the sandwich is ruined. So I started experimenting with focaccia, which is what I've ended up using. Water, which I will temperature probe. 200 mils of olive oil. In the pot. You can still see that like, there's bits of flour, bits of yeast, bits of salt, whatever. And then pretty soon it'll become this uniform, beautiful thing. Focaccia is soft, it soaks up juice well, but maintains its structural integrity right till the end. It's a regular shape, so it's easy to make sure that you built the sandwich so that every bite contains every element. Plop. And then somewhere nice and warm, and later we have bread. This is for the, for the shoestring fries. Mandolin is about as lethal as it gets. How do you cut yourself before? Everyone's cut themselves. <laughs> it happens all the time. Always use the hand guard, obviously. Not that I am, but... <laughs> and then I'll soak these in water. It helps get the starch out of them, which stops them sticking together when you fry them. Put them over there and we'll deal with them in a minute. Right, so, ham hocks, or parsley stalks, bits of onion, bottoms of celeries, garlics, like anything you've got, carrot peelings. We want the liquid for stock. And so then when someone orders a ham, egg and chips, we take a scoop of the reduced stock and we heat the ham meat up in that stock so that you're, you're just making the most flavorful thing possible. Right, and then I'll show you, this is one I put on just before leaving last night. This is cooked for eight hours. That's great. Such deep ham flavor, isn't it, the smell? Right, these puppies are risen. Light olive oil in the tray. Doo, doo, doo. You can be firm handed with it, not rough with it. You want to show it who's boss, tell it where you want it to go. But not kind of beat it up in the process. A bit of crunchy sea salt, whack it on top. So we take the fries I mandolined earlier, and they go. Into the fryer. I'm gonna let that fry so there's like a little crust. Making your own crisps, it's like living the restaurant dream. <laughs> right. People would say it was a travesty, but we don't actually season the crisps here. Just because the ham's quite salty, these literally will just provide crunch. Right, time to put bread in the oven. The second prove is done. So what was, you know, a quarter or whatever of this tub has now risen again. 
into this oh, big puffy bad boy. 15 minutes. Put some of the meat in a pan, I put a spoonful of stock in to heat the ham up, make the most of all the rich fatty goodness. Time for the bread. Right, looks like it's done. Let's get this out of here. Woo. Like my favorite thing with ham, egg and chips is an absolute fuck ton of malt vinegar on everything. <laughs> Um, so that is actually malt vinegar mayo. Whack an egg on. Hand me in. What I'm trying to do, not too worried about bits falling out, they're all gorgeous. Um, what I'm trying to make sure is that when the sandwich is being eaten, that every bite has all the elements of the sandwich. So this is piccalilli. You see like now in England, I think a classic condiment to go with ham. It's lots of veg, Romanesque cauliflower, carrots, you know, fennel, Granny Smith apples. We put mango in it as well. And then just kind of quite, quite curry spices, lots of coriander, chili. That egg is now all kind of crispy edged which is how I like them, but yolk's still runny. Decent bit of sea salt on the egg. These are shoestring fries, the things that I was making earlier. Lid on, a little bit of a squish. So here we have Max's Sandwich Shop's ham, egg and chips. We have Arthur Catcher at the bottom, Braised ham hock meat, sweet and rich, piccalilli, a fried egg, shoestring fries, malt vinegar mayo, and the lid. Do you know what? I might just fucking take a bite out of it. Do you mind if I smash it in a bit? I mean, look at it. I'm, how could you not take a bite? British food is seen to be often boring, dull, and lacking in flavour. Was it on my phone? That's a good sign. <laughs> and here, with a humble sandwich, we've turned ham, egg and chips into a, you know, quite a gastronomic experience, I think. So you can take your stereotypes and put them in a sandwich and make them delicious and amazing. <laughs> That's so crap! <laughs> 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 Ha, 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 ha.